Shakespeare, Voltaire, Dickinson, Thoreau, perhaps beloved names to you, maybe barely recognizable names from an English high school class, but regardless of the familiarity that you have with literature, we can't deny the importance and the impact of the written word on our lives. So today I welcome Ron Wheeler, professor of literature, to discuss the importance of literature in our lives. Ron, thank you so much thank for joining you. me today. I appreciate it. Um, Professor Wheeler, whenever I think of literature, maybe mistakenly, I think of only those written pieces that have become famous or notable somehow. How would you define literature? Uh, Carrie, I think a lot of people think of literature as an end product, a story, a novel, a poem. But in reading literature, we need to think of literature more as a process. It's a way that writers express the human experience. Um, you could even describe literature as a specific kind of language. For example, practical use of language is to communicate information, where the persuasive use use of language is to convince somebody of a position. But the literary use of language is to give someone else the experience that they have received. And they do that through the written word or sometimes the performed word. Um, how important do you feel it is for somebody to have a grasp of literature? Well, I think it's very important. Um, it's one of the few real um, means, first of all, that we have to travel through time. Mm -hmm. Literature is real-time travel. Now, archaeology can give us elements of, of a snapshot of time, but literature is more of an energy uh, mm -hmm. showing us what people hundreds or thousands of years ago believed and behaved and what they experienced. In literature, this gives us a chance to broaden and to deepen the human experience. Mm -hmm. And how, how does that happen then? How do we broaden and deepen deepen that perspective? Well, to broaden one's experience is to have a representation of an action outside of, say, your normal course of events. For example, um, not many people have ever been in World War I right. and uh, experienced a mustard gas attack. But in the poem by Wilford Owen, Dulce et decorum esque, it is sweet and befitting. And he describes what a gas attack is like and what death on the front was like. Well, that's broadening our experience. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, literature can also deepen our experience. It can, it can take those experiences that we have and give us a different vantage point, a different facet to think about them. For example, in Shakespeare's poem, Winter, uh, many people glamorize the beauty of winter, but Shakespeare brings the difficulty of winter, and he talks about uh, how hard it is to live through that. Mm. And, and, and that adds a dimension to the experience of just that particular season. Um, literature does seem to deal with um, every aspect of, of human experience, just as you were kind of speaking yes. to. But do you think there's one particular or prominent human mm. experience that most authors find inspiration from? Um, when I'm teaching literature uh, to my world literature classes in particular and also to the intro to lit classes, I, I, I kiddingly say, if you don't know the answer, try love or death. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, these are two of the most intense <laughs> human experiences. Uh, to be in love in that whole range of both sexual attraction to family attachments, friendship, uh, much of literature deals with the, the love aspect of the human experience. And then everyone dies. It is mm -hmm. an experience that we are looking to, not with great anticipation, but it is an experience that we know is coming. Um, do you think it can be used uh, even so far as to break down some social barriers, some things that we're really struggling with uh, in today's age? Yes. Um, and during the Civil War and before the Civil War, uh, slave literature in America uh, did a tremendous service to the abolition movement in making a, a majority white culture aware of slave experience. Mm -hmm. um, authors like Sir, jo Sir Joyner Truth, uh, Frederick Douglass in his Life of a Slave uh, re very poignantly captured an audience because they were seeing through the eyes for the first time what it meant to be an enslaved person mm -hmm. and therefore that 
move the country into a a, a broader sense. Let's change gears a bit. I want to ask you a little bit about your love of literature. Um, how did that all mm. begin and how did you become a professor? Well, I, I, I really consider myself an average reader. Okay. Uh, I, I do not, I, I think, come to reading uh, what, as some people do, naturally and enthusiastically. But I did grow up with a love of hearing story. Uh, my family would tell stories at family gatherings. Uh, I, I grew up Saturday afternoon going to movies, uh, listening to uh, songs that told stories. And I think that all of those experiences combined uh, sort of opened up an, a, an interest and an expression for me. As a professor, I'm, I'm assuming you feel that literature is an important subject, of yes. course, or you wouldn't teach it. but. Um, how important do you really feel that, what, the, what is the role that it plays in a student's curriculum? Is it necessary, especially in college? Well, I think in, in the college level it's necessary. Uh, just, just on, if, if for nothing else, on the level of vocabulary and on mm -hmm. language acquisition. Mm -hmm. uh, because we are all going to have to explain ourselves through language to the society around us. But I think that that's a very minimal uh, importance. Mm -hmm. I think far more important is the fact that all human endeavors, whatever they are, history, economics, uh, religion, they all form stories. And it's in the literary use of language and the literary experience that those stories become alive. Without literature, we really minimize our ability to understand others and to express ourselves mm -hmm. effectively. Mm -hmm. um, I, lo I love that idea and really that's why I know for young children it's mm. so important for them to develop that love and I've got three little ones at home and I know you probably have a view on what's the best way to get them you know going really with a love of literature. Uh, read. Read to them uh, and, and read often. Um, reading to them especially not just when they're at home but making a kind of family time of exchanging reading uh, mm -hmm. is a marvelous thing. Um, Professor Wheeler, just finish out our time by summarizing what you feel is the intellectual um, benefit that literature plays in somebody's life. Literature provides a variety of experiences. Uh, we are all limited in time and space, so we cannot do everything ourselves mm -hmm. firsthand some things we don't want to do firsthand. We don't want to know what it was, what it was like to be pursued by Nazis because mm -hmm. of our religious affiliation. We don't know, we don't really want to know what it was like to live in the gulag system uh, under Stalin. But we really have an interest in these kinds of experiences that others have. And although I've, I'm, I'm emphasizing the rather gruesome at this point, the, the opposite is true. Um, I really have no intention of going up into a perfectly good plane and jumping out. Mm -hmm. But I would like to know, you know, from a skydiver's point of view, what's that story like? Mm -hmm. What's that energy and release of, of the plane and, the, and the, the feeling of falling? And so literature intellectually stimulates and, and hones for us an ability uh, for ourselves and understanding our neighbors and it helps us see the world more clearly. Good. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor thank Wheeler. You. And thank you for joining us. Uh, in today's age of technology and video, I hope you can take some time to recognize the value of literature in all forms and in all time periods, really. So dust off your library cards and uh, take some time to challenge your mind with some literature.